So in Ableton 11, there's a really, really good way to randomize some of your MIDI clips. So for example, if you have a one bar loop in there, whether it's a drum arrangement or a bass arrangement, um, and it starts to become quite repetitive and that's not what you're after, you're running out of ideas as to what to do next. Well, there's a new function with an Ableton 11 and it's one that I really enjoy. I incorporated into a lot of my music even before this happened. Uh, there was other ways of doing it, but it, um, it was, not as easy and effective potentially as what we have now enabled in 11. And I'm going to give you the example of what it looks like here on the left hand side. So we've got two new lanes. We've got velocity and probability. So these are the two things that we're going to have a look at today. And there's just so much you can do with it. You can add lots more life into your track by basically adding uh, randomization to probability and velocity. Now, this kind of idea has been around for a very long time. Um, if you have a look here behind me, you'll see some modular equipment. If you just have a look up there, and essentially the modular equipment allows you to do this uh, by using a number of different uh, modules. If you're not sure what modular stuff is, it's um, it's basically lots of different elements that uh, tie together to make up different kind of synths and samplers and sequencers and so on and so forth. Um, so basically, you know, the idea has been around for quite a long time and I'm sure it's been around before that as well. Um, it's a great way just to add variation to your music. Uh, and if you have variation in your music, um, it's 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 a way to kind of keep the attention of your listener. Um, you know, the repetition is a wonderful thing too, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just about how you use both of these things together, I think. Uh, that's where the magic lies. So what I want to do first of all is essentially show you um, or let you hear something that hasn't been randomized um, and it's just completely straight and it's just basically the MIDI data that I popped in here. Um, this is a, a prime example. So if we look at the velocity and the probability, everything is set as it was when I inputted the MIDI data. And then I'm going to show you one that has some probability and uh, or some randomization to the velocity and probability. And I'm going to show you how to do all this at the end as well. Okay, so um, without further ado, we'll crack on. So this is completely straight, no variation in velocity or probability. So what you see is what you get. Very basic, very straightforward. A bass line and some drum arrangements with really annoying hi-hats. Uh, okay, so how do we make that more interesting? Well, this is slightly more interesting. It's the same pattern. It's the exact same pattern. The only thing that we've done is we've added uh, randomization to the velocity and the probability. Now, basically, it's only on the hi-hats, by the way. It's the only thing that I've varied here. Uh, well, on the baseline too. Um, so if we look at the randomization here, it's on the, the hi-hats. Now, if I go over to the note section, and we've got three different tabs now enabled in 11. Um, we're going to just focus on the first one, which is for notes. And if we look here below, we have randomize. So if I click that, just watch the velocity section down here. So that's varying the velocity of each 16th hi-hat. Cool. Okay. So you can keep going until you're happy. Um, and then you might want to go in and just, you know, surgically, you know, move one particular one up or down to get exactly what you're after. But this is a good way just to come up with new rhythms that you might not be aware of. Um, it's just, a, it's another good way to add variation and, and randomization to your music. Okay, so that's that. Um, that's the velocity. There's another thing that you can do while we're talking about velocity as well. If I take all of them and just drag them right up to the very top, we're back to where we were. But if I hold down command, and drag down. Now the velocity is between 48 and 127. So that adds a bit of variation that way as well. And that's by holding command or control on a PC. So that's something to be aware of. It tells you at the bottom of the screen as well. Um, if I hover up here, it says probability uh, 45 to 100% or 47 to 127. But that's basically what it means. So that's one way to do it. Um, and you can drag this up and change that around if you want. Um, so that's something to be aware of. You can move it around here as well, if you like. It's really up to yourself what you want to do. I can drag it right back up here again, go this way, or back to where it was and then randomize it. So that's the velocity. And you can see when you click on each one of these two, they, they kind of highlight just to make sure you're aware of each one. I should also mention as well, <laughs> I should have mentioned this before. Actually, if you don't see these, um, it's just your usual, uh, you know, kind of show high uh, velocity lane button. But now there's a second one here as well. If I knock that off, that gets rid of the velocity. If I knock this one on or off, 
this gets rid of your probability or activates it. So I'm going to keep both of them up here anyway. There's plenty of room. So if we look now at probability, uh, and this is just for the drums, just for the hi-hats actually. So if I select this and now randomize that, that's going to randomize when these hi-hats are going to be played. So if I give you an example of this to make it a wee bit more straightforward, if I click and drag all of these up to 50%, uh, so there's 50% chance that each one of these will be played. Or you can randomize them and it's, it's just that's a wee bit more lively, I guess. And you can keep going until you get something that you like. And then, you know, you can you can tweak each one as well. So I'm actually cl uh, clicking on the piano roll here to select everything within that line. Um, it's just a bit of a shortcut if you're unaware of it. So that's basically everything there. Now, if we move on to the bass, the bass is an interesting one. I have this uh, bass set, the mono. And what I've done is I've actually put, uh, I've put C, C1 at the very bottom. So it's, it's playing that and then it's jumping up to D or C or D or G and so on and so forth. And there's a probability that it'll play this or this or this, All right? So it changes every cycle, which just makes it a wee bit more interesting. And you can go into the bass and, and mess around as well with your amp envelope and, and you know, get the sound you're after. You know, this is without any variation. It's just chaos, <laughs> right? There's more groove there. There's more rhythm and groove to that. And there's not even a groove fit on that yet. Um, but essentially that's what's going on. Um, so if you were to start from scratch, uh, very, very simple. Let's do this now. So if we go to, um, I'm just gonna pull down the straight one that I have up here. Uh, and I'm gonna double click in here. So say that wasn't there and we can't see what we're doing. So this is maybe what you're looking at when you open up Ableton for the first time. So you click on the show. Uh, lanes and then if the probability is stashed out of the way just click here and that'll open it up so you basically have both of those so again I'm going to click on the hi-hats on the piano roll um, you might not be folded as well so if you want to do that um, you can but make sure you have notes in there or else it won't work and yeah so I'm going to go hi-hats fold and then uh, randomize the hi-hats uh, by clicking here like that that's fine so you get the idea and then maybe the prob probability I need to kind of activate that lane and then I can go in and randomize that as well and just change whatever I want as I go along so let's have a listen yeah not bad at all so there's only a couple of notes out of there um, clearly the you know the arrangement needs much more work than that but that gives you an idea how it works. It's very simple, very straightforward. Once you know where everything is, and uh, my advice would be just to experiment with it, get comfortable with it, uh, you know, and after a bit of time, you definitely uh, will get the hang of it. And it's a fantastic addition uh, to some of the other fantastic additions is with Ableton 11. Um, so if you haven't upgraded, I would definitely recommend doing that. There's loads more. Uh, I'll have more tutorials as well on the channel. Um, so if you like this, make sure and check out some of the other ones as well. That's all for now, folks. Thanks, enjoy.